here we are at the wheel. I have a Maja Craft uh, Aura, but you could use uh, any wheel that you have, obviously. Just be careful that your, if your orifice is quite small, boy, I'm tipping a lot. Uh, if your orifice is quite small, when you go to, to uh, experiment with locks, you may get tangled a little bit, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, what happens is the locks get caught on some of these pieces and won't load onto your bobbin. And if it happens, just stop treadling, undo it, and, and it'll load on. So don't panic about that. So I'm assuming this is the first time you've ever uh, tried to play with locks. So I've attached uh, some roving because we're all used to that. Um, and uh, you, so you want to have your wheel set to wherever you're really comfortable with. And at this point, don't worry about uh, the settings that you're going to want to have eventually when you do your perfect lock spun. Uh, this is just so that you can be comfortable to learn the process. Once you've learned the process, you'll go off and running on your own and uh, be able to change all these things very easily. So set your wheel up so that it's comfortable, so you're spinning something that doesn't feel like it's being pulled out of your hands or that you have to panic about. Set it to whatever speed you are most comfortable with. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to spin a little bit of roving, and then we're going to take a little handful of our locks, and I hope you can see how fibrous they are. That's why we've chosen this particular uh, fleece of Wensleydale or Teeswater. Um, it has beautiful locks, but look at all that little halo around it, which is going to make it really simple and easier for you to spin with, rather than trying to spin with just one slick lock that's going to slip through your hands, okay? So, again, you have your roving, you have your wheel set up so that it's comfortable and you're not panicking, you're just going to spin a little bit of roving, a little bit of single, and then you're going to take, you're going to stop treadling, and you're going to take some of this nice lock spun, and you're just going to put it right on top of your roving here. And the reason you're doing that is so that you can begin to feel the difference uh, when you're allowing it to feed onto the wheel. You're so used to using roving that's slick and uh, smooth, and there's no bumps in. And if you come to a bump, you usually stop and take it out because it's a piece of vegetable matter. So this is just to get your hands used to the idea that, wow, when you're spinning and drafting, you're going to have to just relax these fingers a little bit and let some of that spin in. It's okay that it's bumpy. It's okay that it's not going to be totally smooth. Uh, I'm still drafting my roving a little bit here, and now I'm out of locks. And you can see those locks work themselves in very nicely there. Um, so I'm going to take another little bit of locks, and some of them are really opened up, and, and some of them are a bit lumpy, which is great. I'm going to pre-draft just a little bit there, and I'm going to put them in with my roving so I'm not panicking about this process. And then I'm just going to draft a little tiny bit, and I'm going to try to take a deep breath and let the curls, just let them go. We'll just let them go in there. See how that, you know, you have to kind of get used to the letting go process. We're so used to our spinning being um, very uh, controlled and trying to achieve a yarn as the end process that is so super consistent, which is wonderful. But when you're lock spinning, you've got to get rid of some of that idea. Um, you have to be willing and able to say, I'm going to let go of that. So this is just a way for you to feel what it feels like. Okay, again, I'm just going to open the roving up a little bit and shove this in so it's sort of incorporated into the roving. And I'm going to start spinning again, and I'm going to relax myself, tell myself I don't need a death grip. I don't want to overspin and, and be too concerned. I'm going to try to actually enjoy watching those little pieces go in. Um, it's kind of fun because you can see that, wow, here's this lovely lock that comes right off the sheep or the goat. Um, and I'm going to let it have a little bit of a mind of its own. I'm going to pre-draft it a bit so that it feels comfortable in my fingers so that I don't panic when it goes onto the wheel. And I'm also going to open my roving up one more time just so that it's light and easy. And then I'm just going to put them all together and as I draft, I'm going to remind myself, take a deep breath, relax, try to let go if you can once in a while so that you're not building up too much tension and panicking. And you begin to realize that, wow, those locks just go in there and you didn't have to draft everything out. And you know what? It stayed together. All right, so when you get kind of comfortable with that process... And again, it's all individual. Take your time. Enjoy it. You're going to have a beautiful yarn to play with when you're done. 
And some people like to spin uh, just at this level, at this step. They like to spin a roving with locks in it. And that's absolutely fabulous. It could be a single. When you get good enough at it, the single will hold up perfectly fine. If you don't over twist it, um, you know, you have a nice single that's pretty strong. Uh, or you can ply it. Do whatever you want with it. So, so there you go. That could be an end process in and of itself. So enjoy that. If you're looking to move forward a little bit further down the lock trail, uh, we're going to try opening these up again. Okay, and all I'm doing is just separating this. And again, we've chosen a fleece that's just perfect for this. It falls apart so easily. And yet, it holds the lock structure, which is what you're looking for in this step in any, in any event. So my goal here is to have this bunch of locks so that when I run it through my hands, I don't panic. There's nothing big and lumpy that I'm going to have a real hard issue. Well, there's a piece of vegetable matter. A real issue with, with spinning because you know it's different and you know your finger's going to say, wait a minute, I can't let go of that. That's lumpy. So just kind of feel it. Then we're going to do uh, what, what is a worsted join, uh, which is we're going to hold the yarn that we've spun and we're going to start, start spinning and we're going to put a, pull out a little bit of fiber here so it catches. There it goes. It caught. Okay? You do that when you're adding roving. I'm sure you know what that is, uh, a worsted join. Uh, when you join two pieces of roving together, it's exactly the same. So we're going to treat these locks as though they were roving. And I am going to draft, but I'm only going to draft a little because I don't want to pull all the locks apart. And then I'm going to relax my the fingers that I'm pinching with here in front. I'm even going to let go at one point so that I, I get rid of the tension. And I relax and I have a chance to enjoy the locks going in. I'm going to spin again and I'm going to pull a few out and then I'm going to relax. And, and, and smile when those little bumps go in. Look, there goes one right there. Okay? And if, you know, just like roving, if you break it, not a big deal. Just add a little bit on the side here and bring it back. There you go. It's joined. If you get a great big lump, it's fine. It's no problem. You don't have to spin that quite as much. If it gets very thin on you, if you pull it way down low, just like roving, overspin it a little bit. Okay, so it's strong enough to hold on like that and keep going. All right, the whole beauty of spinning from the lock is that the locks get to tell you what they want to do, and you have to begin to listen to them rather than trying to control something that is, um, you know, that you that you know exactly what the end product is going to look look like, and that's what makes some of us uh, spinners panic a little bit because we're so used to the other type of spinning. And it feels weird. Uh, but all of a sudden, when you realize it will hold together, you draft it. See, now here I am drafting. I'm pulling. I'm pinching in the front, and I'm pulling in the back to smooth that out a little bit. But just like with roving, I don't want to pull it to the point where it really comes apart totally. I want to leave something there to spin. So now I'm just relaxing my front fingers and saying, you know what? That lock wants to go in. Go ahead. Have a blast. Have fun. Absolutely. Go ahead. Go to it. Don't worry about what your finished yarn is going to look like. Um, I mean, this is an experimentation time. This is for you, a time for you to, to you know, feel some differences, play with some, some different fibers. Uh, you know, it, it, there are no mistakes. If you get a bunch that you've forgotten to pre-draft, you know, so I come along and, and here's kind of a big clump of locks that I haven't separated. You know, it's perfectly fine. What will happen is they just won't grab quite as well because they're oop, like that. They're individual locks. That, that was a good way to, to, uh, to make the example because what you have to do then is overspin it a little bit so that you're sure, you know, when in doubt, overspin because if you overspin something, it's going to uh, hold up. And your finished product, again, we're not worried about our finished product at this particular time, uh, but you can ply it. You know, go ahead and overspin the heck out of it. It's not, not a problem because you can then ply this and make this into a beautiful yarn. It may be lumpier than you uh, intended. Now, there's a big clump that's going in. That's fine. And again, we're not, uh, you know, this is, this is your, your experimental stage. This is the first time you've done this, hopefully. And the whole point is to get to enjoy the fact that you can spin these locks without commercial preparation. These locks have just been washed lightly. 
uh, and then pulled apart a little bit. Uh, no big deal. No, no commercial uh, energy put out for this. Um, and it, it, it's a lovely way to appreciate the structure of the locks themselves and the fact that each one of them has, has character. Uh, so this is lock spinning. This is spinning directly from the lock, and it's just letting these locks lock in together and kind of do their own thing. Uh, you, again, you can make this a single uh, if you've uh, given the, the yarn enough integrity and enough twist to hold together, but not so much twist that, you're, that, that you've got a real active yarn. Uh, and you can ply it. Uh, ply it with, you can ply it on itself. I'll show you what that looks like. It makes a pretty uh, hefty yarn. You apply it on your, on itself. Okay, so you're going to get this. There you go. Really pretty, lovely, you know, gorgeous, lustrous, lovely. You also can apply it with a single, uh, another single. Um, and that sort of helps to hold the yarn together, particularly when you're starting. I would expect that you'd want to ply it. Uh, because you're inevitably you're going to do some sections that fall apart, which is fine, not an issue. Just ply them and throw them in together, and you'll have a beautiful yarn. So this is it, and I hope you uh, experiment with this. If you have questions, you're certainly welcome to email me. I am online, but I really think when you start to get the idea of playing with these locks directly and choosing a fleece, at least initially, that helps you with the process rather than hinders you with the process is a good thing and not being afraid to you know if you get a little panicky throw some roving in you know if you start to get overwhelmed or it starts to get too uh you know too you have too much twist or you're thinking oh my gosh i can't do this just throw some roving in there do a worsted join throw some roving in take a deep breath relax a little bit and start again no big deal at all I'm also going to do uh, a video on beginning core spinning with locks. And again, I'll try to slow it way down so uh, you can really enjoy it. Um, so there you go.